Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a weekend reading vlog for you. This was originally supposed to be a cosy reading night vlog, but over the next few minutes you're going to see just why things didn't pan out the way they should have done. Please excuse me for not having ironed this shirt. I don't have an iron and ordinarily I would have been able to take this into the shop and steam it. But I can't do that currently because of some situation that you probably are sick of hearing about. Anyway, hi everyone, my name is... I never say hello like that. Wow. I've just got off a phone call with my manager and it went on for about 40 minutes and I think that I have gone mildly posher. More posh? I'll have to start thinking common again. Last of the summer wine, the royal family, my father. <sighs> Let's try that again. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today is apparently cosy reading night. I considered doing a separate video telling you what my TBR for this evening is going to be. But the fact of the matter is, so often I begin a cosy reading night video and through no fault of my own I forget to record any more clips. Cozy Reading Night is usually a seasonal event hosted by Lauren from Lauren and the Books and it's all about spending three hours of your evening focused on just reading and allowing yourself the time to relax and forget about the world for a few hours. I regularly participated in Cozy Reading Night in the past but the last few times have gone awry through, actually I can't say no fault of my own because it was all entirely my fault. But tonight I'm going to focus, I'm going to try and knuckle down and I am going to try and get some reading done. Last night I was thinking about the fact that I have tons of books on my Asian readathon TBR that I still haven't got to and also the fact that I have been holding this book up for a very long time and it might be time to try and actually make some more headway through it. And that book is The Eighth Life by Nino Harachvili. I am only at the page 700 mark, which is only 70 pages more than when I spoke to you the other day. I said that I'd like to read 100 pages today, so I might read this for an hour in the evening as well and try and just get past the 800 marks so that I could finish this tomorrow. Also mentioned how I want to read The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin and I have only got about 13 pages. There was an accident with this book the other day when it fell off a pile of magazines behind the dressing table here and the top all got scratched and if you know me I don't like marred books so I'm having to leave the dust jacket on whilst I read this one because I'm all about the aesthetic of a book which is kind of a lie. When I've got a new book I like to keep it new and pristine whereas if I buy a second hand book I don't mind throwing it about a bit but yeah. Either way, let's, we're not talking about the aesthetic here. I'd like to maybe get a bit of reading of this done this evening. Another book that I want to read is The Tower Hill Terror by Dane Cobain. Dane is a booktuber and author tuber and freelancer and edited an air to murder for me and this is the second book in the Lightfold series, the first of which Driven made it to my favourite books of 2018. I've been looking forward to this one for a while and so I would like to make something of the dent in this today. I am aware that I haven't told you what a single one of these books is about and I'm okay with that. Even if I don't get a lot read during Cozy Reading Night, I have made a plan to read a fair amount this weekend. If this all works out then I'll see you just before kickoff at seven o'clock and then I might see you again at eight o'clock. But Lord knows that every time I try and get one of these things recorded, it never actually works. My day's already mixed up a bit because I plan to get up, do some reading, and then stop at 11 to write some emails to friends and the like, get some of my own writing done. And then I didn't expect the nearly three quarters of an hour phone call 
with my manager, which I don't mind. I haven't spoken to her in nearly 12 weeks. I can't, I can no longer remember how long I've been off work. In fact, this entire week has been a strange one for me in that on Wednesday, I thought Wednesday was Monday. Yesterday, I just had to shout to everybody, what day is it? Because it had gone completely out of my head. And then to find out that today is Friday was one of the most surprising things. Um, I kept meaning to buy my sister a birthday card because it's her birthday tomorrow, but time just ran away from me. Is there such a thing as time anymore? I've always said that it was a construct that humans made just to get us through the day, but the more these weeks go on, I begin to recognise that my life is void and empty. I am just a hollow shell. So I'll see you later. just turned seven o'clock if it's not five past seven already and I still haven't read anything. My sister has wanted to go on a walk for her birthday for ages and today she finally decided that that's what we were going to do. So we set off and I don't think either of us recognised how long it would take. Had a great time and I will probably talk about it more at a different point we are not starting on time, so things are already starting to slip away because now I'm home and I have to make tea for everybody. Tea as in dinner, as in an evening meal, just for anyone who doesn't understand Northern. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make tea and that's for five people. That's going to take us to about eight o'clock. Then I might finally get the opportunity to sit down and read. I might end up just doing three hours of cosy reading night but just later than everybody else. I suppose I could get five hours in, you know, I could just stay up until Lord knows when. I will just say that you can't expect that I won't be able to record clips for the entire evening now because I just won't find the time. So it might just be a few here and there and then I'll gather everything together, do a recap tomorrow and throw an hat on and that wind at the top of the Shining Tour really played havoc with my hairdo. Won't lie. It will come as no surprise to anybody that I failed cosy reading night yet again. And so, lucky for you, I have decided to turn this into a weekend reading vlog. And as with every vlog of this ilk, I've just got out of the bath. Yesterday I had the best of intentions. My sister always wanted to go for a walk to end off her days of being a 25 year old. Today is her birthday, the 16th of May, and so we decided to go for a walk. And we walked from Pimchair Car Park in Goit Valley up to the Shining Tour, which was a somewhat strange, nostalgic experience. I've never walked this way before and my sister had only been up once before with my older brother and my younger brother about 15 years ago and so we took this route it's about 50 minutes walking there and then 50 minutes back but at the top the shining tour is directly opposite the farm that used to be my grandfather's and there is a huge um, story there that could fill an entire book itself with 
familial betrayal and deceit and a separation throughout the times. There was this weird blend of feeling nostalgic for some of our youth spent at the farm, some memories that I'd rather forget, that she'd rather forget, but also this joy of having completed this walk and serotonin levels being high and it was incredibly breezy. She was complaining about her ears being frozen. Indeed, it was cold but it was fulfilling and the scenery was great and it was just a beautiful walk to take. And so we set off at half past four and didn't arrive home until seven o'clock. By then cosy reading night had been going on for an hour. I had to make tea, as I mentioned, and I thought that that would take me till eight o'clock. It did take me till eight o'clock, but then I had to eat the food. And so that took me a bit longer. So I finally sat down to read The Eighth Life by Nino Harachvili three hours into cosy reading night at nine o'clock. Then my brother and sister put a film on called We're the Millers. So I finally started reading whilst that film was on at about half past nine dipping in and out whilst I also tried to watch this film. Therefore, I didn't get much reading done at all. I managed to hit the page, the 730 page mark of The Eighth Life and I have decided that rather than try and get Dane's book read as well and try and dip in other books, I am going to focus on finishing The Eighth Life today. I've been reading this book completely for two weeks whereas I'd previously dipped in and out but um, my focus for the last two, the last fortnight has been on reading The Eighth Life. I wanted to finish it last Friday, I haven't so I just want to read these final 200 pages and admittedly it is a strange book for me to read because I enjoy the experience of reading the book every time I pick it up and I enjoy following these characters lives. Whilst I feel like I could continue just to read about this family and all the exploits and everything they're getting up to, I'm aware that this is also a book that is about the cyclical nature of history and how we will continue to make the mistakes of our ancestors despite our ancestors perhaps trying to instill some sort of learning in us and I appreciate that and I really like this expansive familial narrative and this saga and it's great but at the same time as thinking I could read about this book, or I could read about these characters forever continuously, I also think the book could have ended before the narrator's childhood. I don't think, feel like the narrator's childhood stories are adding anything new to the narrative, but at the same time, I can see why they might be important to the story because they're showing the reader how the narrator came to be able to know all of the stories about her family. I can see this book being a favourite and me admitting it's a favourite with flaws. So my plan is to try and finish that book today. Next time I see you, I should have finished reading The Eighth Life and that is going to be an interesting discussion to have, I believe. Last night, I finished reading The Eighth Life by Nino Harachvili. Immediately, I felt somewhat sad. It was a strange experience. I said yesterday how I thought this book would become a new favourite of mine, but that I would be able to recognise its flaws. And that is exactly what has happened. This book is currently my favourite book of the year, surpassing Patsy, which I did not expect. It is this huge saga of a Georgian family, as in a family from Georgia, and explores so much using recent history to help tell the story of this family. There is something cyclical to the narrative, things come back to themselves, and you get repeat events happening to characters that have happened to their ancestors. Highlights this feeling of inevitability and why the characters begin to behave as though they're unable to change anything. I took this book out of the library 
when they first announced the long list for the International Booker Prize. I didn't really get far into it. I read the first 200 pages and whilst I was enjoying it because of the length of the book, it's 934 pages, I didn't find the wherewithal in me to pick the book up. However, these last two weeks I decided that I really wanted to knuckle down and get it read and so I put tabs in to say where the next parts were and I plan to read a part a day. It's taken me two weeks. My original plan didn't work. <laughs> last night when I finished reading the book I had this strange sense of grief almost at uh, no longer having any more of this character's story to read. I almost wished that the book actually had more pages and was longer and yesterday I didn't feel like that. Yesterday I felt like the book had gone on for too long. It's this strange disconnect within me where I could happily have read more from this character and want to know where the story went but at the same time I can see where this story should have ended and the final part of this story, whilst I realised the author wanted to create a denouement for these characters and to wrap the story up almost and give us some sort of structure to the piece, I couldn't help but feel like the final part of this story, which is focusing on perhaps giving these characters a new future and leading itself towards something, it would be better had the author removed that final part that focused on our narrator and who the narrator is nowadays and instead did include that as a sequel or a separate book because I feel like the final part didn't really fit the story that the author was telling. When I watched Eric Carl Anderson's video where he chatted to the author and the translators, the author did say that there were more chapters, more bits that she'd had to cut out and it was originally over a thousand pages. I question whether that had given that final part more meat. So personally, whilst I love this story, I think it's a favourite and I could see myself revisiting it and rereading it in future. I wish that the author had ended the story earlier and I know exactly what point I'd have wanted the story to end because I feel like that told one narrative and then written a sequel or some book that was an aside that featured the narrator again but also featured the person she's telling this story to, Brilka, because that final part would have made a great story on its own. I think that she didn't do the character justice in that final part simply because she was trying to keep the page count a bit lower. Either way, I recommend this book to anyone. I adore it and I can accept its flaws basically. But then whilst I should have perhaps continued with some of my reading for the Asian readathon, I wanted something a bit light to read so I decided to then start The Tower Hill Terror by Dane Cobain. Driven, which is the first book in the Lightfold series, is as though the golden age of classic crime has been brought into the 21st century and I anticipated that's what I would get with The Tower Hill Terror. The Tower Hill Terror is dark. It felt like Dane's take on Nordic Noir or Maybe like the Val McDermott books of the 90s, it's grim, it's gory, and it's not what I expected after Driven. I'm only 60 pages in, it's still very much a thriller, it's very fast paced so far, I am enjoying it, but blooming heck I did not expect it to be like this. I didn't expect something so dark, especially after what I've just read, but that's fine. It's been interesting to revisit these characters and see them again. I She'll finish it today and I will report back. That's me. I will probably see you tomorrow to wrap things up. I don't know why when I decide to do a weekend reading vlog I always have it last for four days because we know that the weekend doesn't last for four days. Indeed Monday is the start of a new week. I haven't done my hair today and Basically, I'm going to apologise in advance. I am exceptionally tired.
I don't know why. It is currently half past one in the afternoon. I didn't wake up until nine o'clock. The entire day has been spent with me feeling particularly knackered. I have no idea what brought this on. I rarely talk about the issues that I have with my joints on this channel because similar to asthma, these are things that have been with me for the majority of my life and so I don't ever really... They've been that present that I almost think, uh, yeah, it's just that again. But either way, a few years back when I was having some trouble with my knees and they discovered that the bone was wearing away, they actually also diagnosed some arthritis, which I didn't previously know about, so that was fun. And whatever has been wrong this weekend or the last few weeks, my knees have been in pain. And last night I ended up taking not strong painkillers, just paracetamol for the pain so that I could sleep. And this morning I thought it was great because I woke up and I didn't take like 20 minutes for the pain to settle so that I could actually get out of bed. But unfortunately, my entire day has been spent extremely tired and I have no idea why. Let's forget my rambling for a second and move on to some books. I finished reading The Tower Hill Terror by Dane Cobain yesterday afternoon. This is the sequel to Driven, which was the first book in the Lightfold series, and this book follows Lightfold and Miley as they investigate a particularly gory crime. I did not expect this to be as gory as it was. I thought that Driven brought the classic age of crime into the modern day. This book felt extremely more modern in tone. The serial killer slash murderer that's going round felt very much like a modern psychopath. Similar to Search by D.K. Bowleman, another indie novel, both of the books give me the sensation that I wanted from the Robert Gal from the Cormoran Strike series by Robert Galbraith. I flew through this book because the tension was such that I wanted to get through it and know what was going to happen to all of the characters. I do, however, wish that the book had been longer. I think that there were places Dane could have fleshed the story out, but at the same time, I appreciated the brevity, how concise it was, that the tension was there throughout, that it was well written. It's one of those books that indie authors should be proud exists because it shows that there is actually good work out there. Admittedly, Dane does have a publisher for this. This was published by Encircle Publications. I know what the previous title to this book was and so I had a sense of what this story would be about. Indeed, last year I'd had an idea for a book that I planned to call Swipe Right to Murder, similar to Dial M for Murder and then discovered that the book was going to come out a week later and it was written by somebody else. So this deals with computers again, is a bit technological, and I've recognised that there's a theme within a few of Dane's books now that seem to focus on technology and the horrors that can be done when technology is not used in the way it was meant to be used. And I can appreciate that. I appreciate now what inspires Dane as a writer. And I think if you're looking for a particularly gory story, then this one will do it for you. I like the advancement of the characters and the um, relationships between them. I do think there was a bit more rushing in this book than there had been previously. I would have liked to see it slow down more and really hone in on the characters so we could explore them more. But I think it did what it set out to do, it was fast paced, it was a thriller, and because of that, I think you should read it. Last night I started to read The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin, and this was translated by Ha Yun Young. I mention this because I recognise that when I'm talking about these books I'm not mentioning the translators as much as I should do, and they are doing a good job to keep me enthralled throughout these books. I'm only a hundred pages into this book and I like it because it's reminding me of the man who saw everything in style in that it flips back and forth through time and there's this sense of confusion as the character 
is trying to rebuild their life. There's this sense of the autobiographical to the novel that I hadn't expected. I don't know enough about the country that the protagonist is in and so it is interesting to me to read as these workers struggle against their employer and there have been some things in here from the writer and the writer's perspective that I was able to empathise with. I think that similar to The Eighth Life I am going to have to take my time on this one. Um, I know it's relatively short but it seems to be something to mull over and consider. If you stuck around for the entirety of this weekend then I thank you. There have been some ever-changing moments with my hair. Um, today I just couldn't be bothered. Either way, what have you been reading this weekend? Um, have you read any of these books? Do you want to read any of these books? If so, let me know in the comments. We can open up some sort of discussion. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.